good afternoon people and welcome back to my channel in today's tutorial we'll be learning how to make this dress this beautiful ruffle dress you can call it an asymmetric dress so you'll be needing about four yards of fabric four yards by 60 inches if you are using by 45 inches then you will have to buy five yards so that the gathers will be very very full i would like you to pay attention to this video and grab some of the things that i have to do to achieve this particular fit on this dress guys please do not forget to subscribe please click the notification bell and comment like so that anytime i upload a new video you will get me fold your fabric like this and you go ahead to measure your shoulder after measuring your shoulder you will mark out your shoulder slant and you will mark your neckline you mark your neckline by three that's three by three the neckline will not be high will not be low it will be three by three then from there you will connect your your neckline you connect your shoulder slant for a perfect shoulder fit and from there from the point where you mark your shoulder you will mark your armhole your armhole Death should be two inches above your boss point. So I measured it and I'll carve out my armhole. The next thing that I will do now is to measure my boss point. Then my dad will stop one inch below my boss point, that is 11 inches. I'll mark my half length and extra one and a half inch for joining and for trimming. I will mark my dart. My dart is 4 inches. Then I will measure my bust measurement. I will take my bust measurement plus 1 inch. Mm. Then my waist measurement plus 1 inch for that. And another 1 inch for seam allowance. I will mark it right there. The next thing I'll do is to connect with my ruler. I'll mark my half length and I'll connect my waistline to my bust line. Then you see the points where I marked my dart, I will notch. So the next thing we'll do, I've notched my dart. The next thing we'll do is to cut out our back piece using our front piece. So I'll go ahead and fold out the fabric that I'll be using for my back piece. I folded the fabric into two. So I place the first, the front piece on it. Then I'll mark out one inch for my zipper allowance. You can make it one and a half inch. I'll measure my neck depth and connect my neckline. The neckline for my back will be a high neck. So I'll go ahead and roll the line for my zipper allowance and mark my dart point too so every other thing will be equal the only difference is just the neckline and zipper allowance so i'll go ahead and cut i'll go ahead and cut out the other parts and open my zipper allowance then i'll cut my waistline guys please do remember that after cutting remember to please notch your back that so that you know where to pick your dart from then the back that will stop at nine inches from the shoulder while the front that will stop at 11 inches that is one inch below your bust point so i'm done with my busty part and i folded out another fabric for cutting the down part of my gown so i folded it into two and i'll make sure that they are equal at the half length the full length of this gown is 57 and the length of the garters remember it has garters from the knee 
the length of the garters is 12 inches so i will subtract 12 inches from the full length and that is 46 45 and plus one inch for seam allowance 46 so i'll make sure that what i have will be enough for me the next thing that i will do now is to measure from my half length to my hip length from my shoulder to my hip shoulder to my knee and shoulder to where the gathers will start from i'll mark my that my waistline and i'll take my measurements after getting my measurements i will add extra one inch for seam allowance for the dart and extra one inch for normal joining then i'll place my tip my half length at the waistline i'll measure from my shoulder to my hip 27 shoulder to hip 37 and shoulder to where the gathers will start from that is 45 plus one inch for seam allowance 46 so i'll go ahead and mark out these lines i am done marking the lines so i'll go ahead and take my waist measurements and my dad i'll measure <laughs> my hip then at the hip side i will subtract two inches from my at the knee side i'll subtract two inches from my knee measurements or you can subtract one and a half inch and i'll do the same at the full length if your hip is 40 40 divided by 2 is 10 when you come to your knee measurement you have to mark it you subtract 2 from that 10 and mark it that is your total hip measurement my nose it so i've done cutting the front side for the gown for the skirt but then i'll notch my dad and i'll go ahead and cut out my gown the down part so after cutting the down part i'll use it to cut the back part the only difference between the front and the back is the zipper allowance so I'll fold out my fabric and I'll go ahead and place. So I'll go ahead and cut out my back piece. You place the front on it and cut it out plus a zipper allowance. So the next thing I will do is to sew my facing. I cut a facing for my front bustier. So I'll go ahead and place my facing the front part of the bustier and sew this way i'll follow the line of the neckline and sew after after joining i'll notch and after notching i will top stitch mm -hmm. I'll top stitch on the freezing part so that it will smoothly stay on the inside without bulging out. So you go ahead and give it a nice press so that it will relax very well. So for this skirt, I've added my dots to the front and to the back, and I closed my zip allowance before I joined the front and the back together then i'll go ahead and iron then for the back panel for the back bustier i use a bias to fold the neckline and i've closed my zipper allowance i'll go ahead and iron so for the gathers i'll attach my crino line to the front of my fabric first i use a one inch crino line you can actually use it two inches or four inches crino line if you want i'll attach it to the front first before i'll fold it over to the back this crino line will help it to we have the gardens to stand a bit so that they won't fall and look boring i'll fold it over this way 
and so but i did not get the color that i wanted i wanted a blue kilo line but i couldn't get it at the moment so i used blue so in order to close this quino line so that no one will be seeing it you have to fold over twice that means you fold the first time like i'm doing now and you fold again so that the quino line will hide i'm done doing that i'll trim and iron if you do your gathers this is how it will actually look like it will sad very well this is the work of the crino line so i've ironed my bust here the front and the back and i ironed my facing very very well so that it's lap and for the i'll trim out the shoulder the excess facing that came out at the shoulder and for the back parts you can see i ironed this very well i ironed my zipper allowance too so that when i when it is time to insert my zip i'll follow the line that i marked out there so i'll cover my shoulder this way and i'll go ahead and join then i'll turn it out and this is how it look like it look very neat then i will also do the same i'll place them front to front and cover it with my facing and i'll go ahead and sew If you fold it over this is how neat it to look like on the inside and the next thing you will do is to go ahead and take your bust and your waist measurement so after marking that this time you are going to be dividing your bust by two instead of four because you only have the front and the back piece so i'll go ahead and shape my bust here I'll go ahead and shape the other side you may need to trim out your shoulder a bit more before you add the sleeve I've added my sleeve right here so I've trimmed the down part of the body and I'll bring my skirt part the down part of the gown make sure that your darts aligned guys so i'll first of all make sure that my darts aligned before i'll go ahead and join i'll open the zipper allowance for the skirt parts i've opened the zipper allowance so that i'll have enough space to join then i'll make sure that my darts align before i'll go ahead and join so after joining these I'll go ahead and to my overlocking machine and overlock all the rough edges before I insert my zip. So I've overlocked all my rough edges. I'll trim them very, very well so that in the inside will look very neat. I used a thick crepe for this mat for this style, so there is no need for lining. The fabric is thick already so this is how my dress looks like on the inside as you can see it looks very very neat so i'll go ahead and attach my zipper i will use i use an invisible zipper for this so i'll attach it and make sure that it looks very very neat i'm done attaching my zipper and you can see how it looks like and I'll place my gown on my table for the final part I'll place my table at the shoulder and I'll mark out my knee measurements this is where I will slant this fabric from I'll advise
you guys to join everything before you start slanting your knee or anything so that you make sure that everything is equal so i've slanted my knee and i'll go ahead and cut i've cut out my slant our dress is looking put together now so i'll mark out how my gathers will go on this dress and this is how i marked it it will not enter the hip it will come a bit close to the that side then it will cross my half length and down back to my slant for my knee so i will sew from this point then cross over also from here then cross over to the front and up from the up i'll come down back to my knee slant so this is how i'll be doing mine so that it will have that standing effect make sure that it comes up to the waist side so that it will have a nice fit so i'll go ahead and close the edges with a bias i don't want to fold and i'll close it in order to make it look very neat and after i must have done this or after you must have done this you go ahead and start gathering i would have gathered with a gather stitch or a needle but my fabric is very thick so i'll gather on my fabric directly but if you're using a light fabric you are free to gather with a needle or with a gather stitch so i'll go ahead and start my gathering i'll start from this point first i'll start my gathers at the place where i slanted my knee from then i'll go down to the slope side and from there i'll come over to the front and follow the lines that i've marked out and when i reach my waist side i'll come down again from there you see where i marked at the back so this is how you trace out how your gathers will go or your fabric guys please i advise you to overlock your gathers before you start your fabric before you start gathering because it might be very hard for you to overlock after you must have gathered though i did mine that way i overlocked after i finished gathering but i'll advise you to overlock your fabric before you go over to gather so this is a slow process you will take it slowly my fabric is thick so that's why I'm gathering with my hands just make it as full as possible you would need about five yards of length to be very very long a very long fabric like five to six yards by 12 before you can be able to achieve a full gather so this is how it will look like uh, i'll continue my gathers at the end of the day i closed my crino line i folded twice in order to close it because i wanted my dress to have a perfect finish so guys please just try out this style and let me know when you are done because i would like to get nice reviews from you guys thank you very much and please do not forget to subscribe click on the notification bell so that anytime i post a new video you will be the first to view it thank you guys bye mm -hmm.